Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. Felony charges dropped, prosecutors dismissing several charges against two social workers connected to the death of a three-year-old boy. What the women will face moving forward coming up. And a young father gunned down. New surveillance video shows us just what happened before the trigger was pulled, what police are saying about the shooting. And wicked weather today, the winter cold and snow. We will keep you updated on the lake effect snow that we're tracking and how much of it is going to fall here on the east side of the state. And that frigid winter weather tops our news this noon. Thank you so much for joining us. Paul Gross is here in for Brandon. He's tracking that lake effect snow as well as how cold it is out there. Yeah, it's been coming in waves, Rhonda. I mean, we had a kind of a flare up this morning. You can see some of that here. And then notice in the last hour, it kind of has kind of squashed a little bit. There's one band still left, but basically outside of these bands, it's been flurries or just nothing under these bands. It's been more of a persistent light snow and notice they're oriented almost east west. So if you were under one of those bands, it was kind of persistent snow for an hour or two, but uh, basically just a dusting. In fact, Sue Drab emailed me from Manchester. She had like a half inch from yesterday's, a half inch from today's bands. And so it's just going to be off and on through the afternoon. The other factor is temperatures in the teens right now. These have not moved since our morning show this morning. If you were watching, it's like the same temperatures, but the wind has increased now 10 to 20 miles per hour. So you put those together and we get a wind chill that's well down in the single numbers, even a few sub zero readings. So it's not an exaggeration or hype. It is bitterly cold outside, but you can handle it if you just dress appropriately and through the afternoon, just those scattered snow showers, nothing real heavy, just scattered about temperatures holding steady, but those wind chills again in the single numbers. Now, don't forget, you can always get your four zone forecast on click on Detroit.com. Just go to the weather page and hit the four zone weather tab. Be back with the rest of the forecast in just a bit, Rhonda. All right, Paul, we'll see you then. In the meantime, we are following some breaking news in Auburn Hills. That is where Opdyke Road is closed in both directions at Knollwood after a multi vehicle crash. You can see here two cars and a semi truck all look damaged and involved in this accident. At this point, it's unclear what caused the crash, but we do know that the light snow and a little ice is all it takes to cause some slick conditions. We also don't know if anyone was hurt. Auburn Hills Police and the Fire Department are currently on the scene investigating. We do turn now, though, to just a heartbreaking story out of Detroit's east side from earlier this morning. A young father gunned down while pumping gas. It happened at a gas station, a marathon gas station on Gratiot Avenue, just north of State Fair. Sean Lay is there on the story with new surveillance video that shows exactly what happened moments before the shots rang out. We've spent this morning checking out the security camera footage, chilling footage from this gas station from earlier this morning. What it shows is clear that this young father was ambushed right here at one of these pumps. Let's give you a look. Security camera footage shows 22 year old Javon Perry walking to his white Cadillac after paying for gas at the marathon on Gratiot and Eastburn. Just after midnight this morning, he had just gotten off work. A man in a black hoodie approaches. He and his friends can be seen inside the station moments earlier. They seemed agitated and angry, yelling at the clerk. Well, the man then approaches. Perry backs away at the pump, putting his hands up. A man in red then comes into view. Perry then runs for his life. At the end of this clip, you can see the suspect in black pulling out a gun. Javon Perry was shot in the head and killed. His cousin tells me Perry was a hardworking father to his beautiful baby girl. <laughs> I'm rooting for AJ. You say he worked hard for his car? Worked very hard. Everything he got, he worked hard for. That's all those boys know is grind for what you want. And you think someone saw the car and saw? I don't know. I don't know what they saw. Detroit police tell us these are clear images of both men wanted in this killing at this hour. The man in the black hoodie and his friend in red seen moments before inside the gas station. The clerk here says both suspects were behaving in an aggressive way. And look at this. When Perry came in to pay for his gas, you can see Perry here waiting cautiously at the door. He knew something was wrong before going back out. He thought to safely pump his gas. Police are calling those men armed and dangerous. Call police if you can help identify them. Meantime, so many family members and friends of Javon Perry, they're calling him a great guy and a loyal family member. From Detroit's east side, Sean Lay, Local 4. Oh, that video is just chilling, but clear pictures 
of those suspects. Let's hope we can get them off the street. New at noon, felony charges have been dropped against two social workers in connection to the death of a three-year-old boy. The three-year-old is Aaron Miner, and his body was found last May decomposing in his mother's apartment. Social workers Kelly Williams and Elena Williams, or I should say Elena Brown, were later charged with involuntary manslaughter, second-degree child abuse, and willful neglect of duty. Today, a judge dismissed the manslaughter and child abuse charges. The neglect of duty charge is still pending for both women. We are learning more about that wrong way crash along I-75 that killed three people and critically injured two others. Police say that the driver of a 2013 Chevy Malibu was going northbound on the southbound lanes of I-75 at I-94 in Detroit when she hit an Oldsmobile head on. This all happened Wednesday morning. There were four people in that Oldsmobile, 23 year old Carl Lewis Hawkins from Pontiac and 21 year old Elijah Dwayne Holden from Auburn Hill. Hills. The back seat passengers were killed. Two men in their 20s from Pontiac and the front seats were critically injured and clinging to life right now in the hospital. The driver of the Malibu, 34 year old Leanna Monick Custard from New Baltimore, was also killed in the crash. That crash is still under investigation. One year old Zaira Adams is home safe and sound after an Amber Alert was prompted as an issue for her early this morning. Her father, 32 year old Tyrese Adams, turned himself in at the 6th precinct and is currently in police custody. Little Zaira was also turned in at the time. The child was reported missing last night after being taken from her aunt's home on Plainview Street. This is on the city's west side. Fortunately, Zaira was not hurt. Singer Trey Songs was in a Detroit courtroom earlier this morning. This was all after allegedly assaulting a police officer. Songs is accused of assaulting a DPD officer during a meltdown after his concert at Joe Louis Arena last week. Today, Songs was in court for a hearing being held behind closed doors. He'll return to court on February 10th for a preliminary exam. Multiple briefings are happening in Washington today on what the Obama administration believes were Russian hackers trying to influence the presidential election. Tracy Potts on Capitol Hill this afternoon with more on what's expected to happen behind closed doors. Today, America's intelligence experts present President Obama with the report he asked for. Details and evidence supporting their belief that Russia hacked Democrats to influence the presidential election. Those same intelligence agencies are the ones that targeted the State Department, the White House, and the Joint Chiefs of Staff. The Senate Foreign Relations Committee and the Armed Services Committee also get closed-door briefings today. President-elect Trump questions whether the intelligence community really has hard evidence against Russia. There's a pretty stark line that's been drawn, and the president-elect will have to determine who he's going to believe. Mr. Trump's skepticism is creating a tense relationship with intelligence agencies that he'll soon oversee. I find his kind of disrespect to the literally thousands of intelligence professionals who keep this country safe, uh, frankly flabbergasting. I just, I just don't get it. Given some of the intelligence failures of, uh, of recent years, the president-elect made it clear to the American people that he's, he's skeptical about conclusions. Those same intelligence experts are scheduled to brief President-elect Trump in New York tomorrow. Of course, Mr. Trump said his briefing was put off a few days, he thinks, because intelligence officials were still trying to nail down details and support uh, their idea that Russia was behind all this. Intelligence chiefs have said no, that meeting was always scheduled for Friday. Tracy Potts, NBC News, Washington. All right, Tracy, thank you. We do continue to follow very latest on that sinkhole in Frazier. Today, the 22 families that were forced to evacuate their homes are expected to learn when they will be able to return. That is, except the three homes that are condemned and those families will not be able to return. They'll also find out if they're going to be compensated for the inconvenience. A city council meeting with the families is slated for this afternoon. So far, three of those 22 homes have been condemned, as I mentioned, as crews continue to work on that sinkhole. And don't forget, it is a big weekend for the Lions this weekend, and you can watch it all unfold right here on Local 4. Our big coverage starts with Local 4 News at 6 p.m. on Saturday, followed by Football Night in America at 7.30. The game is set for 8.15 kickoff in Seattle against the Seahawks. Our Jamie Edmonds will also be in Seattle providing live reports. And then... 
When you wake up the following morning, wake up a little extra early and join us on Sunday morning for a special edition of Local 4 News today. The entire weekday morning team will be here. Everard, Brandon, Kim, Jason, myself. It all kicks off at 6 a.m. on Sunday morning. We'll bring you all of the highlights from Seattle and hopefully all we'll be talking about is a big old Lions win and preparing for the next playoff game. Fingers crossed on that. Still ahead on Local 4 News at noon. A Breaking Bad star is in some trouble with the law. What political leaders are saying the actor did in the midst of a local election. And remembering those lost in the Charlie Hebdo attack, a dozen people killed when an attack was launched at the French magazine's office. Why French leaders say that the country is still on high alert. But first, an alleged kidnapping and attack filmed on Facebook Live. The people behind the disturbing video now facing charges. What police are saying about the victim next. If you've been Welcome back, everybody. Charges are expected against four people who tortured an 18 year old with special needs, and they did it all while filming on Facebook Live. The horrifying video shows the suspects laughing at this victim as they repeatedly hit him and cut off his clothing. The victim was taken to the hospital. He's traumatized, but physically OK. Police say that all four suspects are in custody. Ceremonies were held today in France, marking the second anniversary of the Charlie Hebdo attack. Twelve people were killed when the French magazine's offices were attacked back in 2015. Charlie Hebdo marked the anniversary with a special issue of the magazine. At the ceremony, the mayor of Paris and the French interior minister laid wreaths at the offices as the city remembered the lives lost. All this as France remains under a state of emergency after the Paris terror attacks that happened two years ago as well. New Mexico State Police are continuing to investigate Breaking Bad star turned, politi uh, turned politician Stephen Michael Kizaday. Well, officials say that Kizaday became the commissioner elect in the city of Bernalillo in the landslide election. The Republican candidate then sued him, stating that Kisadea's wife signed his candidacy documents in violation of campaign laws. She also says that he was not in New Mexico the day those documents were even filed. But Kisadea's camp responded by releasing photos of him holding his election paperwork and the day that it was signed. Still ahead here on Local 4 News at noon. We have new information regarding children and peanut allergies, what you need to know to reduce your child's chances of having an allergic reaction. And I know we'll have a reaction if we walk outside, Paul. <laughs> Instant one. Burr. Oh, yeah, it's, it's a cold one out there. But the, the, the piece of good news is that we're missing out on a bigger snow down to the south. That's going to stay to our south. So when are we going to finally get rid of this deep freeze? Well, you better get used to it. It's going to be here for a while. We'll talk about that and the Lions forecast coming up right after the break. Prosecutors call him the greedy butcher, performing surgeries that were unnecessary. Victims want him locked up for life. Hopefully he'll get the time he gratefully deserves. The doctor wants four years or less in prison. The prosecutor wants 20 years or more. We're deceiving the patient. I mean, that's sadistic and, and, and butchery. Now that it's sentencing day, will justice be served? The defenders tonight at 11. All right, it is bitterly cold out there, but let's not overplay this. Now, wind chill advisory type temperatures would be 20 below wind chill. We're not in, nowhere near that. We're at a wind chill of around zero in most areas, zero to five above. So that's bitterly cold, but as long as you dress appropriately, you can handle this. It's just, if you're gonna be exposed for a long time, you just need to make sure you understand that these single numbers, like zero or one, that's what it actually feels like on your skin. The actual temperatures are in the teens, but again, you can't forget about that wind. All right, lots of interesting, interesting weather going on around the country. You can see there's a river of moisture coming in off the Pacific into California. Tremendous amounts of rainfall and up in the mountain snow. And you're going to find this hard to believe. Some of the Sierra Nevadas here are going to receive snow. They've already received some. They're going to continue receiving snow to a height of about five feet. Now I'm about five foot eight, so they're going to get about this much snow in some of these mountains out there. It's just an extraordinary amount of moisture for them, and that's good news because that snow then melts in the spring and it fills up the reservoirs, and that uh, gives them the water that they need in the summer. All right, now as I mentioned before the break, this area of snow is missing us to the south. It's going to give uh, some snow to some areas that are not accustomed to having snow, and as for us, what we're dealing with is just the lake effect bands and. Basically 
basically, you can see right here, these bands are across the state and they're trying to make it across. Earlier on today, they kind of flared up this morning, but, uh, but they've kind of settled down a bit right now, but we still expect there might be a few more flare ups this afternoon. Nothing that everybody's going to get. It's just something that like yesterday, some of us will get flurries and some of us will get a snow shower. The model isn't doing a great job of handling it, but you can see that by four o'clock, it looks like a few more of these are breaking off and coming across the state. So it's just something we'll keep an eye on, but I don't think it's going to have a tremendous impact on the roads if you are running some errands this afternoon. So just be ready for the scattered snow showers. Again, temperatures not moving much. We're going to stay in the upper teens to near 20, and you just have to remember that wind chill is going to be zero to five above. So that's what you need to dress for. And then tonight we shut off the snow and skies actually become partly cloudy for a while. The actual temperature dropping into the single numbers, but the wind chill will be sub zero tonight, zero to 10 below. Now let's spend some time on your seven day forecast. Now the first part's easy all the way through Sunday. Just think about now a chunk here from today through Sunday. We're in this Arctic grip with uh, wind chills basically in the single numbers and uh, the actual temperatures not budging much either. We start to warm up next week and I just took a look at some new computer model data literally during the commercial break just before this weather segment and in the models are suggesting that we're going to get some accumulating snow on Tuesday and then it will change to rain later Tuesday into Tuesday night. Devils in the details. We're not going to have those for a few days, but just be aware there could be some trouble on Tuesday. And then as far as lines are concerned in Seattle, a look at this right around kickoff, which our time is about 815 here on local four rain moving in, not a downpour, just spotty light rain, even a few wet snowflakes. And look at these temperatures, mid thirties and wet. Boy, that's not pretty weather. The football players are not going to be happy with that, but you still got to play the game, Rhonda. Yeah, they do. And maybe the Lions should head outside today and practice <laughs> just to get ready for it. <laughs> All right, let's turn our attention to good health. Today, researchers have come up with a new way to help children reduce their risk of allergies, foodborne allergies. The National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases says that foods containing peanuts can be introduced to children at a high risk for allergies as early as four months old. They say that this can help the child adjust to the food sooner and not have as drastic allergies. Still, this should be done with extreme caution under a doctor's care and always with the help, of course, of an allergy specialist in a doctor's office. Well, today on Ellen, the talk show host talks about the controversy surrounding a gospel singer who was supposed to be a guest on her show. Kim Burrell was going to be singing on the show, singing a song with Pharrell from the Hidden Figures soundtrack, but Ellen canceled her appearance, and today she's going to explain why. She said some uh, very uh, not nice things about homosexuals. Yeah. So uh, I didn't feel like that was good of me to have her on the show to right. give her a platform after she's saying things about me. Um, you can, of course, hear more about the interview and her talk there with Pharrell on the Ellen Show today and also Pharrell's response. Of course, Ellen airs right here at 3 o'clock every weekday. And you can chat about the whole situation, if you'd like, on the Local 4 Facebook page. We'll have some of your comments on Local 4 News first at 4 with Karen Drew later today. Coming up here on Local 4 News at noon, a new business popping up out west involving some very rare rocks from space. Find out just how much these pieces of planet are worth. Replay so Welcome back, everybody. We have something cool to show you before we go. You've got to see what's happening out in California. This is pretty cool. Now, that's where a handful of space enthusi enthusiasts are working to buy and sell the rarest space rat rocks that we know of. This so, is pretty yes, neat. these two men have traveled to some 80 different countries buying and selling rare space rocks. Yeah, some of the rocks are over 4 billion years old, and some of the most prized possessions of the man selling them is his rock from Mars. What mm. he's selling them for is what we're all curious uh, about. A lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being with us, everybody. Have a good day and be safe and try and stay.